I'm here with Brad Jerzak, and Brad is one of the primary teachers, speakers, panelists for our upcoming discussion that we're going to hold starting September 8th, I believe. No, September 9th. I'm going to look at my calendar just to make sure I didn't mess that up. Um, September 9th, Thursday, September 9th on the, the Apocalypse, the book that we commonly call Revelation. And so I just wanted to get some thoughts from Brad about what he's looking forward to. But I do have a question, Brad, like Revelation is such a strange book. And it seems like people come out of the woodwork to try and find out what it means, like because they've got just not only hundreds of theories, but they're all trying to apply it to current events. At least that's what I was brought up with. That's the, that's my background. I think yours is pretty much the same. Um, I'd love to hear you just speak to that for just a minute before you talk about what you're really looking forward to. Sure. Yeah, I grew up in a in a church that was very dispensationalist, and it's exactly as you described. We we believed that Revelation was relevant today. I still believe that. However, our version <laughs> of that was identifying who the Antichrist would be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what year the Lord would catch us away in the rapture when the great tribulation would begin as in sort of like um, John threw a snowball and it's probably going to land next week. Right. And so that's how we saw it as predictions. Right. The way I see it now is John rolled a snowball that had immediate application implications meaning to the people he was writing to mm -hmm. but as history rolls along uh, the snowball actually continues and picks up momentum and so at any given generation you're, you're going to be able to say um, if the shoe fits what is antichrist an antichrist spirit look like right now what it, what are the wars and rumors of wars we're dealing with these are not signs that history is about to end within my generation, but there's certainly um, signs pointing us back to Jesus. It's like, what does he have to say? How is this a revelation about him in the midst of all the kind of chaos that sort of looks similar to what the first century was dealing with? So that's, that's how I read it these days. And awesome. in other words, while I think John is speaking to seven churches in his era, um, there's a word of the Lord here for us, especially in terms of call to worship and a call to faithfulness, regardless of, you know, who the beast happens to be. <laughs> the beast du jour <laughs> might be. <yeah. laughs> so uh, another, oh gosh, another theme that's very prevalent in the apocalypse is the theme of wrath. Do you want to mention that, speak to that at all? Yeah. So we just um, hold, that, hold that for a six month class. <laughs> sure. Well, one of the most fascinating phrases in the whole book of Revelation, it shows up, I think, in chapter six and chapter 14, and it's the wrath of the lamb. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a loaded statement. And in, in, in a sense, then uh, we see the line of the tribe of Judah that indicates victory. But the means of that victory is through a lamb who's been slain. So what is the wrath of the lamb? Um, my suspicion is it, it's a lot like the rest of the New Testament language for wrath. And that is God's consent to our experience of the consequences of our own defiance. It's not that he's wrathing us in a direct way. But when we get to Revelation 6, we'll see how the wrath of the lamb looks like uh, uh, Christ allowing us to do what we do until we cry out, Lord, have mercy, you know? So things like wars and famines are not imposed by God, but the wrath in the sense of this, that if we refuse to follow the lamb, we will opt for the paths that lead to destruction. And we always do. <laughs> so, so um, there's some wrath going on, but, but it's really, I, I think this idea of wrath, the wrath of, giving us over um, until we bottom out 
on our own unlamb like ways. Yeah, like a Romans one giving them over. exactly like Romans one. Yeah. Yeah. I also think that makes a lot of sense because if, if you're, if you're serious about following what it means <clears throat> that it's the lamb that's done this, yeah. well, that's self-sacrificial, other-centered, life-giving, laying down my life for the other love. Yeah. Um, and so w- what does that look like when it's defied um, or we don't pay attention to it? Well, we end up destroying ourselves. Yeah. Um, and God says, I, I can't just intervene and rescue you. Um, Cause then we get into a drama triangle. A good friend of ours would say, um, yeah. but God, and God's not going to do that. He's going to partner with us so that we, we are the ones that actually come to, to change our, our thinking and our mind. Sure. Our the means of the rescue, if there is one is the intervention, so to speak is, is the lamb saying, follow me. There's a Jesus way to live that brings about a better outcome. Who's ready? (laughs) Well, apparently not us, but maybe the, the study will help us be more ready. I certainly hope so. I think it will. So with that, let's segue into just uh, your thoughts about what you're looking forward to, because I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty fun time. Yeah, I, I really look forward to the synergy of our interactions. Um, even when some of the lecturers have put in significant work into a particular chapter, um, the surprises that come when we begin our conversations together are just marvelous. And, and um, you know, the book of Revelation had a rough time getting into the New Testament as late as the three eighties, even John, the the uh, Gregory, the theologian was saying, you know, we shouldn't include this because <laughs> the heretics use it more than us to create disasters to the point where it'd almost be better not to have it. But there was a compromise where they said, okay, we'll let Hebrews in as long as revelation can get in too. And that's a whole interesting history, but it's the same today. It's like the, you know, it's been so abused that it's almost done more harm than good in the last century. And so I'm sort of excited to see a redemptive approach to it that says, you know what, this did get into our scriptures Uh, we do regard it as a revelation of Jesus Christ. Is there a possibility that we could interpret in ways that are actually uplifting and helpful and not just leverage to scare people into whatever altar call we have set, right? But what if people could actually fall in love with Jesus Christ more deeply and exercise a faithfulness, not just in the face of persecution, but in the face of the seduction of world systems? and politics and so on. I really see it as a call to faithfulness. So I I feel like the book is gonna exhort us in some helpful and healthy ways, along with people who have a lot of experience using it that way. Um, You know, Brian Zahn is gonna be a guest, if I remember correctly. And I I think he's been practicing the right use of revelation for the last decade. And so, so it'll be fun to have our guests jump in and and contribute as well. Yeah. Well, thanks, Brad. I appreciate you taking a few minutes to talk to us about it. I'm it's, it still feels like it's so far away, but it's not, we're only like five or six weeks away. Right. And can I just, can I just invite people that we, we do actually offer the course for university credit too. If there's anybody who would like to take it as a grad studies course with me, three credit hours, you could use it at St. Stephen's university or transfer it to other grad programs, um, you've still got about a month in which you could register for that. And people could just contact me directly and say, I'm interested. And what I will say is, well, you've got to register for jo- the course first with open table. And then I will walk people through taking it as a registered course for about $1,000 US. Awesome, awesome. Um, so how would they get in touch with you? Brad Jersak at gmail.com.
There you go. That's pretty easy. There it is. All right. Thank you, Brad. Sure appreciate it. Thanks, John. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, you bet.